okay, this is it. This is the time where you actually make a lifestyle change. I know it's not easy, you know it's not easy, but you've committed to this, you've committed the time and the money, and this is where it comes down to you actually you know, putting the, the pedal to the metal and doing this and making this work. 90 to 95% of the people that come in our office have food issues. We need to get your intestinal system, your adrenal glands, your liver, your metabolic makeup clean. And the way to do that is right now, we're gonna start with food. And what, how do you eat it? What do you eat? The frequency you eat? Don't worry, you're gonna have more than this video to go by, all right? I want you to watch this video. I want you to, you know, right now watch it. Don't have to take notes. Bring it home. Show whoever's, whoever's cooking for you, if it's not you, make sure they watch this video. Even family and friends, let them watch it. It's only a 10, 12, 15 minute video. Okay, so make sure that they watch it to understand what you're going through. This is not permanent. Keep that in mind. We're not taking this stuff away forever. But what we're gonna do, and this is the hundreds of patients in my office that have done just what you're endeavoring to do right now. They've done it too. This is what I've seen. Is that when you get clean, when you cheat in the future or when we add foods back, if you know if that food's bad for you, we got to get you really clean, get your immune system working strong, and when you do introduce those foods that are bad, because all these things we're going to take away, not necessarily bad for you, but we're trying to figure that out a year from now where you're going to be at. Okay, so when you do introduce those foods back, you're going to have an immune reaction. If it is bad for you, it's going to make you real sick, and you're going to say, well, guess what? I'm not going back to that food. All right, we have this all the time, this conversation all the time in my office with patients. So let's start off. Shopping. Very important that you get high quality food. There's a big difference between Market Basket and Shaw's and Philbrick's. Three levels of food. Don't kid yourself. At Market Basket, you're paying not a lot of money and you're getting not a lot of quality for a lot of things. You're shopping the perimeter of the supermarket, don't forget. That's what we're trying to do. We're not going to be shopping for things that are packaged, that are wrapped. That's a bad sign. Okay, that there's quality in there. So a lot of things that are packaged or wrapped for now are going to be gone. We'll get those back to you later. But so we're talking market basket, low quality, cheap food for the most part. Again, you don't want to generalize anything. Shaw's, middle of the ground, a little more expensive. Philbrick's, higher end, where you're going to have the ability to buy organic grass-fed uh, meats and uh, fish that's, that are more typically clean. Okay. Um, so that's what we want. We want you to shop in the perimeter of the store. You're going to spend more money, especially in the next few weeks. Fruits and vegetables aren't cheap, but that's part of this. All right? That's one of the reasons why if you eat low expensive foods, I think there was a, um, a deal at Domino's the other day where $5.99 for a large cheese pizza. What do you think the quality of that is? Or $2 for a double cheese burger at Burger King. What do you think is going into that? A lot of garbage. And a lot of garbage that you react to, which makes you sick, which is why you're sitting here. So we have to clean that up. You're only cheating yourself. Don't forget, right? I can't force you to do this. I have a saying, I can't care more about your health than you do. All right? So if you're watching this, we're on the same page. Let's move on. So the worst foods you are going to come, come across, and the whole general public is going to come across. And I'm going to make a little prophecy here. 25 years from now, you're going to see that gluten, okay, which is the protein in wheat, barley, rye, protein in there, it's called gluten. And what it does is it binds food together, makes it, uh, the protein makes the food more malleable, easy, easier to process. We could talk about that forever, but 25 years from now, they're going to look back and say that gluten was a poison, flat out, for the vast majority of people in this country. I'm gluten free. I don't touch it. Neither should you. So the three biggies are gluten, dairy, and soy. Those are the three big ones, and we'll talk more about this. The biggest question I get is, what do I have for breakfast? And we're going to talk about, right now, the smoothie. And we can talk more as we get going, but you need to get a blender. If you want to spend some money, $300, $400, you don't need to do that, but the Vitamix blender is the best blender. Just make sure you get a decent blender, $100, $150, um, and blend up a smoothie for breakfast. I'm going to give you a different powder initially. Um, we could probably have two or three different types of powders that, that are protein-based, that are plant protein-based, pea protein, um, and we're going to have you put those powders in and mix a lot of different things with them. We want to definitely have a lot of vegetables, three to one vegetables to fruit. So green vegetables like chard, kale, bok choy, spinach. That's what we need to do. We need to be putting tomatoes in there, mixing it up. I have to tell you that one of the th issues we have is that people don't like the taste of things, or it's, it's actually the texture. The human brain in two weeks can change what you now thought you didn't like. You can now start to like it. It takes two weeks, though. So just because the texture is different, it may be thicker, 
Try to work through that. That's a vital part of this whole thing. So I want you to be mixing everything but the kitchen sink, putting it into those smoothies. Uh, and we'll talk more about that individually, but a morning smoothie is, is very important. I need you eating within a half an hour of getting up every single morning. No coffee, all right, for the beginning, no coffee. All right, coffee is very acidic and people have reactions to the proteins. So that could give you a headache, that could be tough. A lot of people, that's a deal breaker. I'm sorry, it's just we're trying to get you as clean as possible and coffee is not the way to do it. If you wanna do tea in the morning, you can do tea. And I don't care if it's caffeinated or not, it's less caffeine than coffee. You can do that, you can do a tea. Talk to me about that specifically though, okay? Uh, breakfast, you can have eggs, why not? All right, you can have sausage. We like to have chicken sausage or turkey sausage. We don't like to have low-grade sausage. You can have bacon. I don't want you eating bacon every day. All right, there are nitrates in bacon. I understand that bacon isn't healthy in certain ways, but it's a heck of a lot better than having a muffin. Okay, so you can have bacon. Um, I don't mind that. A Lara bar or a whole food bar, like a macro bar. A Lara, L-A-R-A, -A, or a macro, M-A-C-R-O. We can get these bars just about anywhere now. They're whole food. They're actually nuts and berries. Um, and now, if you are diabetic, we're going to monitor or we're going to alter some of this, so keep that in mind. Um, what else can you have for breakfast? Well, you can have the same thing you had for lunch or dinner. That's what they do in foreign countries, you know. The SAD diet, the SAD, standard American SAD diet, is all about the whole, you know, grain-based breakfast of waffles and pancakes and muffins which is why you look around, 68% of our population is over, overweight or obese. So we don't want that. Homemade chicken soup, boil some eggs, spend the day on Sunday making, you know, boil a bunch of eggs and have you know, the eggs throughout the week. Some people do have issues with eggs and we'll talk to you individually about that. Um, but uh, slices of chicken breast, put it on a salad, olive oil, vinaigrette, that should be your dressing, salt, pepper, get the taste of the salad into your mouth. Understand that you, you don't want to load dressings on things on salads. You want to use, um, try to get the taste that nature um, made. Okay, so get used to that. Um, you can eat any type of meat. I like to have organic, um, buy free range grass fed chicken, beef. Um, if you can find any natural animals, like uh, this time of year people hunt, they get venison, you can find bison out there, that's, that's doable. Uh, I want you to eat fish. I want you to eat fish, two to three servings a week of fish. Um, I want you to avoid Big fish, though, like a, a bluefin tuna that may be um, right now going extinct. That's something you want to think about. Uh, but you can have tuna. Just keep that in mind. Um, and you want to basically eat fish, like I said, two to three times a week. Vary it up. Um, you want to definitely avoid farm-raised fish. Ask me about what, how they feed the farm-raised fish, and you probably don't want to eat that. Okay? Um, let's see. Veggies. Fresh veggies are best. Multiple colored veggies are even better. Get into that veggie aisle. Start picking. Try different things. Mix them in the blender in the morning. Very, very important. This is where you're going to get your vitamins and minerals from. All right? not, a, not a mineral supplement. All right? I want you getting things from the actual fruits and vegetables, which leads me to fruit. If you are a diabetic here, talk to me. But if you're not diabetic and you don't have blood sugar issues, um, two to three servings a day. I don't want you loading up on fruit. Fruit is fructose, and it switches over very quickly to, um, to sugar in your body. And sugar's gonna be a big problem, okay? Um, broth, broth to make soups, you can do that. Read the labels to make sure that they are gluten-free. Uh, nuts, there are some people we wanna limit nuts with, but for the most point, most people, I talk about four to six small meals a day, a handful of nuts and berries is really good. You can do peanuts, but I don't want you to do peanuts all the time. Mix it up, almonds, cashews, walnuts, mix them up. Go to the store, buy a bunch of bags, mix them in a big bin so you can just go in there and grab. It's all about convenience. If you're hungry with what you're doing with me, let me know because there's a problem there. You should not be hungry. But we don't want to overstuff you, okay? So don't leave the table, oh, you shouldn't feel that way, okay? What do you drink? Water, water, water with lemon. That's a great thing to drink during the day. I like to have you do 32 fluid ounces and have that water bottle next to you all morning. Drink 32 by in the morning. And then roughly, if you can get 32 fluid ounces in in the afternoon, do it. You will be peeing more during the day until your bladder gets used to it. That's part of the detox. Clean yourself out. Uh, I like seltzer water. You can get seltzer water. As long as there's no artificial sweeteners in it, there, it's a really good thing to drink during the day. You can mix it up with seltzer water. And like I mentioned before, tea is great. Now, one of the things I didn't talk about is your new best friend is going to be almond milk. Unsweetened if you can. 
If you have problems with sugar, again, don't do the sweetened. You can do the sweetened, though, if you don't have diabetic issues. Um, I will mix almond milk and coconut milk, that's the other one, into my smoothie. Now, what I'll do is I'll do about 8 to 12 ounces of coconut milk, and then I'll do about 8 to 12 ounces of water and make a big smoothie, and I'll drink a cup, cup and a half, maybe 16 fluid ounces, and then I put the rest in my fridge, and I do that at uh, lunch. So basically, what I've had in the morning is I get up, I have a smoothie every morning, I have my, all my supplements, I do that. I have great energy, if you've noticed, I have great energy. You know, some people think I have too much energy, but I have great energy. Mid-morning, I'm going to have a bar to hold me over, and then I'm going to have a smoothie at lunch in an ideal situation. Okay, now, of course, I'm going to have a burger now and again. That's how it works um, in the real world. But I'll have a smoothie and then a healthy lunch. So I went into lunchtime eating maybe three meals by the time 12 o'clock comes around. Real good way to do it. Um, let's see. We're looking at olive oil. You're going to saute with olive oil. You don't want to bake with it. Um, you want to use olive oil. Get some really good olive oil. You can do that. Uh, you want to use coconut oil. And I'll, I'll tell people to use walnut oil to actually cook with at high temperatures. Um, now, butter is one of those issues. I want you keeping butter out for now. Margarine, no go. Ghee, G-H-E-E, -E, is an Indian butter that you can use. It doesn't taste quite the same. It's a little bit different, but you can use that. Um, the number one reason we have heart disease in this country is because of seed-based oils. So don't be fooled by canola oil uh, or vegetable oil or corn oil or soybean oil. Don't be fooled by that stuff. It's bad, 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 bad. Okay? That's how we have... What happens is inside those seed-based oils are omega-6 fatty acids. And the ratio in our country of omega-3 fatty acids, which are the good ones, to omega-6 right now is 20 to 1. It should be 1 to 1. And that's our problem. Processed foods have high omega-6. Seed-based oils are very high. It's in all the processed foods. And that's why we have inflammation in our arteries. And that's why cholesterol sticks to your arteries. Okay, so that's another whole topic. But we don't want inflammation, and seed-based oils is big. So keep those out of you. All spices, A-OK. -okay. I want you not to load your food with salt. You want to keep your salts to you know, 1,500 milligrams a day is, is, or below, especially if you have blood sugar problems. Um, and let's see, never stop taking your medication. That's between you and your doctor. As you get healthier, you'll be able to cut down on those meds. Maybe get rid of them. That happens all the time in our office. It's one of our goals, OK? But don't stop your meds. I'm telling you now. Okay? It's outside of my scope of practice to work with your medications. So that's between you and your MD. Okay? So I encourage you to do that. The final thing I want to talk about is supplements. You're going to be given supplements. I want to make sure you're taking vitamin D. I want to make sure you're taking omega-3 fatty acids. And there's a few others that we have a lot of people take. I'm always modifying what I'm doing, trying to learn the best stuff that's available right now. But right now, vitamin D and omega-3 fish oils are very, very important. So make sure that you're taking those if we missed it with you. Um, one of the phenomenons that I've learned over the last couple, three years is that people do really well the first three, four, five weeks. And then they start to fall off the bandwagon. And their progress goes like this, really, really well. Then they start to, bleh. and when I dig deep, they start to cheat. All right, I start to learn, well, I had this at my Aunt Mary's uh, you know, cousin's wedding. And then I had this, and then I had that. And I didn't quite take my supplements, but I try to get them in. The people that do the best in our office that look me in the eye and they say, whatever you say, I'm going to do it. I'm paying you a lot of money. I'm not stupid. I'm going to stick with whatever you say. Those are the ones who do really, really, really well. Okay, so it's my hope that that is you. We're not going to abandon you just by watching this video, uh, but I hope you learned a little bit and uh, we're going to give you some information, some hard paperwork that you can have and we'll be talking about this. Watch the video, write some stuff down question-wise. If you have questions, we want to talk. Um, you know, make sure that, uh, that we are on the same page with all this. Okay? Have a good day. Thank you.